हेलो एवरी वन दिस इज शी बॉय वेलकम टू माई चैनल जैन शिकाइना ऑफिशियल जैन मीन्स गॉड्स डवेलिंग प्लेस एंड शिकाइना इज गॉड्स ग्लोरी टूडे वी गोन लुक इन टू प्रॉवर्ब्स चैप्टर एटीन वर्सेज वन टू ट्वेंटी फोर प्रॉवर्ब्स चैप्टर एटीन वर्सेज वन टू ट्वेंटी फोर एन एन unfriendly person pursues selfish ends and against all sound judgment starts quarrel so too fools find no pleasure in understanding but delight in hearing their own opinions when wickedness comes so does contempt and with shame comes reproach the words of the mouth are deep waters but the fountain of wisdom is a rushing stream it is not good to be partial to the wicked and so deprive the innocent of justice The lips of fools bring them strife and their mouths invite a beating. The mouths of fools are their undoing and their lips are a snare to their very lives. The words of a gossip are like choice morsels. They go down to the in- inmost parts. One who is slack in his work is brother to one who destroys. The name of the Lord is a fortified tower. The righteous run into it and are safe. The wealth of the rich is their fortified city they imagine it a wall too high to scale before a downfall the heart is haughty but humility comes before honor to answer before listening that is folly and shame the human spirit can endure in sickness but a crushed spirit who can bear the heart of the discerning acquires knowledge for the years of the wise seek it out a gift opens the way and ushers the giver into the presence of the great in a lawsuit the first to speak seems right until someone comes forward and cross examines casting the lot settles disputes and keeping and keep strong opponents apart A brother wronged is more unyielding than a fortified city. Disputes are like barred gates of a citadel. From the fruit of their mouth a person's stomach is filled with the harvest of their lips they are satisfied. The tongue has a power of life and death and those who love it will eat its fruit. He who finds a wife finds what is good and receives favor from the Lord. The poor plead for mercy but the rich answer harshly one who has unreliable friends soon come to ruin but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother so here um proverbs chapter 18 verse 1 says as i'm going to only like pick up few verses and we can you know talk about that so verse one says an unfriendly person pursues selfish ends but uh, ends and against all sound judgment starts quarrel see they don't have to be wicked to do this you know <clears throat> if they're just unfriendly that they're not in your favor and they don't want to be in your favor they don't want to uh you know it says that unfriendly just a person who doesn't want to be your friend what does he do he for his own selfish reason what he does is against all sound judgment he might have like all this all the right like he might be you know knowing the facts he might be knowing the right things what you're trying to say but he will start a quarrel why because he is not your friend he doesn't want to be in your favor so that's what an unfriendly person does and we have to be a care- lot more careful with such people because they are <clears throat> they act friendly but at the same time they don't want to agree with you on the right things why because for their own selfish reasons verse 2 fools find no pleasure in understanding but delight in hearing their own opinions and then we know that you know just because they're fools they don't they don't have the sense to understand anything and that's why they uh, bask in their own opinions verse 5 it is not good to be partial to the wicked and so deprive the innocent of justice we have seen this in verse 17 and also 16 right the same similar verses right not to be 
say partial to the wicked meaning not to give in to their wickedness like not not to agree to their uh, evil ways not to agree to their wicked things not to agree to their lies and gossip and and not to deprive on the other hand not to deprive the justice for the innocent uh i like this verse a lot uh it's actually one of my favorite too 10 the name of the lord is a fortified tower the righteous run into it and are safe so so true so true because and i've experienced it uh, still experiencing it and i know that it is so true so deep so 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 i mean appropriate for my life because the thing is whenever i go to the lord you know he's he appears to me like a strong tower what is a tower a tower is something which is like have you seen these light towers where they there's a light and then it gives direction to the aircraft it gives a uh, uh, direction to the lost it gives direction to the uh, unsafe people you know uh, and then it's it that tower acts like a refuge so um so you know uh god is comparing himself to a fortified his name is like a fortified tower it's he says and then when a person when the right person righteous person run into it they are safe because he takes care of them he knows why they have come into his presence he knows why they have come into that tower he knows because he knows that that there is you know wickedness uh, all around them and then they're trying to escape that and come and take um safety in the lord safety in that tower so the lord's name is like a fortified tower which means like a very strong strong tower these towers are not cannot be shaken by any volcanoes or tornadoes or anything like that because they're built very high uh some hundreds of feet i guess so uh they are very strong and and they serve the purpose for the things that i mentioned 11 the wealth of the riches is is the fortified city they imagine it a wall too high to scale so see again the wealth of the rich is uh, uh, sorry the wealth of the rich is the fortified city the rich see nothing wrong with having money but at the same time holding money for wrong reasons and and and, and misusing that money is very wrong like if that money is pleasing to god and it that money glorifies god and if that money uh, serves uh, the purpose of why god called you on this earth or just that you enjoying in the, the proper way that's good but if that money <clears throat> is going against uh, you know the innocent or being misused or something like that then it's wrong so here we talk it says that the wealth of the rich rich is a fortified city so they think that you know the wealth is like a big 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 city like these you know nothing wrong with that but you know the uh, the rich people like the zambanis and all of them here they think it's their like the wealth their wealth is like a city and they think that uh, they imagine it to be a wall too high to scale but is that uh is that uh for a permanent thing no it's not because they imagine it a wall too high to scale then they think oh it is we have so much that we can that nothing can go wrong with our lives we have so much that nothing can happen to us you know they they have that kind of expectations on the money they have on the wealth they have who uh, some rich rich people not all but some uh 12 before a downfall the heart is hot haughty but humility comes before honor before a downfall you know we know that uh, lucifer in the heaven also before its downfall uh his heart was very haughty like he was very proud right but people who have humility people who are humble honor comes before them we we have also seen this i think the same verse in 15 or 14 and 15 and 14 i think both chapters uh 15 the heart of the discerning acquires knowledge for the years of the wise seek it out this is so true and i like this heart of the discerning you see when someone tells us something you know 
when we have a heart of discernment when we have a heart of light clearly seeing it as water and water and milk as milk it's not like you know even though it's mixed uh, water and milk can be mixed right but if we see it as oil and water cannot be mixed but if we see it as oil and water the then we know then we know that we have a discerning heart people will know that we have a discerning heart so even though water and milk are mixed but we see it as oil and water which cannot be mixed then we have a discerning heart so that is what discernment means that means clearly knowing clearly knowing the facts from wrongs the right from wrongs the facts from untrue things so that is a discernment so it says it's, it's a very nice verse actually i'm liking it now i mean i just saw this i've never like see i mean i might have seen but not like to um uh, put my you know focus on this the heart of the discerning acquires knowledge you know and for the years of the wise seek it out why who seeks this kind of discernment the wise the people who are full of wisdom the people who want you know to be wise the people who want to rule justly the people who want to live a life of righteousness they will seek out this kind of heart which is a discerning heart seven so um um 16 a gift opens the way and ushers the giver into the presence of the great see this is a also a very nice verse which means that if someone gives a gift to us or we give a gift to others you know it it says in the bible that it opens our gifting opens us into the presence of the great presence of the great presence of the great meaning who can be great on uh, you know both earth and in heaven it is only god so when we give gifts and and not gifts because you know we want to be sh- showing off not gifts that you should you know that your name will come out there not give gifts so that you know you can be glorified not that kind of gifts but gifts that glorify gives that glorify god through you you know will assure you, will assure um, will make people look great in the eyes of god will make us look great in the eyes of god because that gift you know can be anything from like 10 rupees to 10 lakhs or 100 lakhs or one what whatever that might be or from one small a uh, piece of cl- like a handkerchief to like a, a suit or a big dress and a beautiful dress anything you know anything that comes out from the heart with a good heart you know wanting to gift a person those people are actually great in the uh, they they their greatness is taken into the uh, presence of the great it says you know their their uh, yeah their their gift actually op- they because they are the givers of such things it opens them into the presence of the great great which who is god and also here i want to add one more thing is not just that but also they will be known as a very kind and generous uh people on the earth too because uh you know uh, they're not boasting about it they're not brooding over it but they have you know helped and they have given gifts like that so they are considered to be very kind and generous people i know few people like that and in, including my mom you know 21 the tongue has the power of life and death and those who love it will eat its fruit uh so the tongue has a, we have heard this is very common right has the power of life like whatever we speak and uh but if you speak the words uh, of life you know life comes if we speak the words of death death comes and sometimes what happens is in our circumstances we might say things very wrongly or uh, say things that are that are like contrary to what god is saying about that situation and those things you know we have to be very careful because um sometimes you know even when i'm like uh, kind of uh, disturbed and all that i get little 
angry with my daughter because you know she's not doing what she's supposed to do and and here we're losing time and there it's you know not just time but resources and all that so i get a little disturbed and i can say a word or two to her but immediately i you know ask for forgiveness from god because i know i'm not being patient i want things right for the right things to happen in the right time but when things are delayed and all that and i get perturbed and i say such a thing then immediately i ask god not to you know um not to bring that to manifestation or not to bring that to light why because the thing is it says that the tongue has a power of life and death so whatever we speak we either speak life or we speak death into that thing and those who love it will eat it it's fruit so if we love life we eat its fruit and if we love um, you know death we eat its fruit people have to eat such kind of things so what they speak is what they uh, say also i mean what they say is also what they live out so that is what the word of god is saying here uh 22 he who finds a wife who, uh finds finds what so he who finds a wife finds what is good and receives favor from the lord um so it's again like uh two is better than one it's that kind of thing and uh and a wife we meaning not a quarrelsome wife or not a this thing but a godly wife a wife which who knows how to cater to the needs of her husband who knows how to please god please him please god please um you know be submissive and and do all the right things uh, and but be assertive at the same time so a wife a man who finds such kind of wife um receives favor from the lord why favor from the lord because it says that what two people can accomplish one person uh be, it becomes very difficult for them to accomplish in many ways in all the ways you know be it um, mentally emotionally financially uh, all those things are things that need to be done by two people or a group or a family or something like that but when one person takes up the whole load of uh, fulfilling those duties it becomes very hard so the lord is saying that that it is uh uh and they find favor from the lord because they actually uh, and also they'll correct one another they'll uh, teach one another they'll admonish one another they'll guide one another so before god like then they're accountable for one another before god so all those things matter and because all those things matter uh, they find favor uh, from god so that's why it says that it's not good for a man to be alone but to have a helpmate who is the wife but again people who are not not married and then live as wives and husbands are not considered are not included in such category so that is one more thing because marriage is a covenant they need to keep it holy uh, and they cannot defile it because it becomes a curse for them and their seven generations ahead if that has to come forward so but yeah so he who finds a wife finds what is good and receives favor from the lord so um so it's important for any anyone i think who are not married to seek the will of god to seek the face of god for the for their matrimony for their marriage uh, plans and all that because ultimately you know god has to be the center of of their relationship god has to be center of their lives individually too and then god has to be the center um of like you know of their dealings of everything then then it is a good thing then they can receive favor from the lord um and uh, so here are some verses in chapter 18 that we looked and um thank you so much for listening may the lord bless this word and thank you